The Model T's light weight gave the car better performance, better fuel economy, and required less material, making the car cheaper. One of the ways that Ford achieved light weight was by using something called vanadium steel. Vanadium steel was lighter than typical carbon steel, which meant that the parts made from vanadium could be smaller and lighter. Another trick that Henry Ford used was to use just a single spring on each axle. Most cars used two or even more springs on each axle, so that was another place where he saved weight. Yet another trick was to cast the engine block in a single piece. Model T's predecessor, the Model N, had an engine block cast in three pieces, which was heavier and more difficult to assemble. The result was that the Model T was a lightweight car, used less material, gave good performance, and was a great value. In 1908, most American roads were just dirt paths, full of ruts and bumps. Most American car makers dealt with this by making their cars big, rigid, and heavy. Henry Ford's Model T, by contrast, was small, flexible, and light. One of the keys to that flexibility was the front axle. It was pivoted in the middle, had a pair of radius rods that kept it aligned, and allowed it to flex with all the ruts and the bumps. The rear axle was similar. Even the frame itself could flex. The result was that like a reed bending in the wind, the Model T twisted and flexed over the bumps, but didn't break. When the Model T first appeared in 1908, it had one of the most modern engines available on any car. There were two things about this engine that made it really modern. First was, that the engine block and crankcase were cast as one piece. Most cars of the time, like the Model T's predecessor, the Model N, had the crankcase and the cylinders cast as separate pieces and bolted together. The other thing that made this a modern engine was that the cylinder head was removable. Ford sealed the joint between the block and the head with a copper asbestos gasket. This made the engine not only easier to make, but also easier to maintain, because you could remove the cylinder head for things like grinding the valves. Both of these things became standard eventually on all cars, but in 1908, the Model T was the only American car that had these features. Many early cars, including Ford's Model N, used batteries to supply the electricity to ignite the gasoline fuel. But as we all know, batteries can run down. And in 1908, there weren't very many rechargeable batteries, and there weren't very many places to recharge them anyway. Some cars supplied electricity with a device called a magneto that mounted underneath the hood of the car and was driven by a chain or a belt off the engine. Ford's Model T took advantage of the fact that when the engine is turning, the flywheel is always turning. Magnets mounted on the flywheel move past coils mounted behind the engine. That generated the electricity that fired the spark plugs. This tester illustrates that as the flywheel turns, the magneto generates electricity. And when the flywheel turns fast enough, you get a spark at the spark plug. It was simple, it was elegant, and it was one of the most distinctive features of the Model T. In 1908, most cars used sliding gear transmissions in which a lever moved spinning gears from one position to another. These were rugged and efficient, but shifting them was a tricky skill to master. Some people said that to shift properly, you needed to have a mental picture of what was going on inside the transmission. Most drivers, though, didn't want any mental pictures. They just wanted to be able to drive their car. Henry Ford chose to use an older style transmission called a planetary transmission. It really wasn't rugged enough for big, heavy cars, but it worked well on a light, small car like the Model T. Model T drivers shifted 
by pushing pedals on the floor with their feet. If you pushed in this pedal, you were in low gear. If you let it out, you were in high gear. If you push the center pedal in, you were in reverse. And if you push the right hand pedal, that was the brake. It was a system that was very easy to learn if you'd never driven a car before. And that, of course, was Henry Ford's target audience.